Hey there, it's time for another Circuit Python School lesson with Prof G and Python peeps. In this lesson, we're going to get percussive as we learn how to play audio files in Circuit Python. So let's learn big. Now, if you've been following along, this is the code that we had at the end of our previous lesson. And if you haven't saved this to the Circuit Python folder where we're saving all the code examples that we create in this series, I've already done that. But if you haven't, you might want to do that now. And then, since we're going to be modifying this code, I'm going to change the comment on the top to read what we're going to end up with, which is Lesson 10, Make Some Noise. And I'm going to resave this to my CPB in the CircuitPy volume as code.py. Now, since we want to make some noise in this tutorial and play some sounds, we're going to need some sound files. So I've created a folder with drum sounds called Drum Sounds, which you can find at the Google Drive at this URL, bit.ly slash circuitpython dash school dash files, all lowercase. Now, these sounds are based on a great tutorial by Adafruit's John Park. John runs several YouTube programs for Adafruit, and he's someone who you should really follow on Twitter as well. He's a great educational resource. Now, once you've visited the Google Drive at this URL, just right-click on the folder Drum Sounds, select Download. Google Drive will take a minute to zip up your file. Your browser might automatically download your files to your Downloads folder. I have my browser configured to ask me where I want to save this. I'm going to save this to my desktop. Google Drive downloads folders as .zip or .zip files. My browser automatically unzips files after they've been downloaded, but if yours doesn't, just double-click the .zip file to decompress it as the drum samples folder, and then you can throw out the .zip file. If you take a peek inside this folder, you'll see seven WAV files. Those are our sound files. Now, I've swapped out one of the sounds in John's tutorial for a scratch, since I want to be able to do a bit of scratching in future lessons. But now let's get this folder on our CPB. I'm just going to drag my drum sounds file onto my CircuitPy volume. And if you open up your CircuitPy volume, you'll see the drum sounds folder in there. And note that when we want to play files inside this folder, we're going to have to refer to the full path mentioning this folder name spelled exactly as you see it here with the same capitalization. Now here's the code we're going to need to write to play sound files using CircuitPython. Now for a CircuitPython newbie, this code might be a little intimidating at first, but you'll use similar code each time you want to set up a speaker and play files, so you'll be able to copy and paste these lines of code, and you can consider them almost like a software Lego. Now a couple of things to note. CircuitPython has been updated to play MP3 files, but I found that the quality of MP3 files being played back on the CPB is significantly worse than if we play back WAV files. WAV files are a different audio format. MP3 files are compressed files so they can be smaller, but since CPB playback is so much better with WAV files, I suggest using WAV files if you're using a Circuit Playground device. And if you want to play back a WAV file, make sure that it's formatted in file type WAV or .wav. It's formatted as mono and not stereo at 22 kilohertz or less, and it's saved as a 16-bit WAV file. Now, that might not mean a lot to you, but in another video, I show how you can use free software called Audacity to take a standard sound file like an MP3 file and format it like this. Now, one more thing to note, there's not much storage at all on the CPB, so you can't save large audio files on that device. If you try to copy over lots of audio files or a very large file, you'll get a message that the copy couldn't complete because you've run out of space. Now, while a CPB doesn't have much storage, if you use CircuitPython on a device like a Raspberry Pi, the Pi has a micro SD card with multiple gigabytes of extra storage. So if you want to do work with lots of sound files or large sound files, the Pi would be a better choice. Also, MP3 playback sounds better on the Pi, so you can get away with compressed audio files too. Now back to the code that we need to write. First, we need to import libraries that will extend the CircuitPython language so that we can work with audio. And to do that, we'll use these two lines here. From audio PWMIO, import PWM audio out as audio out. You want to make sure that you've got the capitalizations exactly as you see it here. And then underneath that, from audio core, import WAV file. Again, pay attention to capitalization. Now next, what we're going to do is configure our speaker so that it can play. And to do that, we say speaker equals. Now speaker is just the variable name for the object that we're going to create. Now that's going to equal digital IO dot digital in out. And we also use that when we set up our button A and our button B. Here what we do is we pass in between the parentheses board dot speaker underscore enable. Again, pay attention to the caps. And this is going to set up our speaker with the name speaker. Then we set the direction of speaker. Now we didn't have to do this with the buttons. The default for digital in out is for anything that's set up to be an input. But since the speaker is an output device, remember we're sending a file to be played out through the speaker. So we need to set up speaker.direction equal to digital io.direction.output and make sure that you have the letter case exactly as it's shown here. 
Now next we'll say speaker.value equals true. That'll finish the setup of the speaker. And then on the line below that, we're going to create a variable called audio to hold an audio out object. And in parentheses, that's going to be board.speaker. Now board knows where the speaker is on our CPB. There is a built-in speaker in the same way that board.neopixel knew where our 10 built-in NeoPixel lights were. So include these four configuration lines at the front of your code and the speaker on your circuit playground will be ready to be used. Now remember, we stored files in our drum sounds folder. So we're also going to create a variable called path and this is gonna contain a string called drum sounds. That's the name of the folder. Plus we'll put a slash at the end of it. The slash in a path name means we've reached the end of the folder name. And we'll just make sure that we include path before any file name so that our code can look inside of the path, the drum sounds folder, to find any of the sound files that we reference after it. Then the actual playing of the files uses this chunk of code here. So first we get data for the file that we want to play, and we do that with the open command. So we pass the path name, the drum sounds folder, plus the file name, and then the comma RB here means read binary data. Now binary data is just ones and zeros. We're saying, hey, take the raw data that's saved directly on our CPB. So we've opened up this data and we put it in wave underscore file, lowercase snake case. Wave underscore file is just the variable name that holds all that binary data. Now you'll notice we didn't create this variable with an equal sign like we normally did. We use this with as syntax. Now with as is a handy thing to use whenever we read in files. It's a shortcut that saves us from having to write any additional code that would handle problems that might occur if there were a problem reading the file from the device. If we didn't include this, we'd also have to include another line to close the file when we're done with it. At this point in your CircuitPython career, you can just remember use with as whenever you use the open command. Then in this next line, we convert the ones and zeros that are in wave underscore file, and this line is gonna convert it to a real wave file by passing it into the wave file class. That class is something that we imported with this import statement up here, and the file that we're gonna create from this is called wave, so that's what the lowercase wave is. It's just the variable name that's gonna hold the data that's been converted to a real wave file by taking the ones and zeros that were in the wave underscore file. So after we've set up the wave file named wave, we play that out through the board speaker. Now remember, audio is this variable that we created up here. It's an object of class type audio out, and that points to the board speaker. So by saying audio.playWave, we just play our new wave file out through our board speaker. And then in the next line, by saying while audio.playing colon, and then underneath that pass, we're just going to continue to play the file until the file's done. And that's it. Now there's a lot to this explanation, so if you need to rewind and listen to this again, that might be useful in making sure that you understand the steps. You can also search online to see if you can find some other explanations if you still don't get it. But just know that the code that you see here is the code that we need to use whenever we want to play back a properly formatted sound file on your CPB. So let's code this up. So back in Moo, let's first import the libraries needed so that we can play sound files. That's from audio PWMIO. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. In a future lesson, we'll learn that that's a certain type of digital signal, and we use PWM when we play back sound files. So from audio PWMIO, we're going to import PWM audio out as audio out. Pay special attention to the letter cases. If you get that wrong, then you'll get an error. And then on the next line, from audio core, import wave file. Next, we're gonna set up our speaker, and we'll do that by creating a digital in out object to be held in a speaker variable. So we'll say speaker equals digital IO dot digital in out, and in parentheses, we'll pass in board dot speaker underscore enable. That's speaker underscore enable, not just speaker. On the next line, we set the direction, speaker dot direction equals digital IO dot direction dot output. As always, pay attention to the letter case. And then we say speaker dot value equals true. Then finally, we need to create an object of class type audio out, so we'll call that audio. We'll set that equal to audio out, and in parentheses, we pass in board.speaker, which is the location of the speaker on our CPB board. Next, we'll set up a variable. We'll call that path to hold the location where the sound files are on our CPB. So we'll say path equals, and then in between double quotes, drum sounds. That's the name of the folder that holds the files. And we put a slash at the end of this because that says we're done with the folder name. And now let's write the code that's actually going to play the sound. So we'll say with 
open and in parentheses we pass in path plus drum underscore cowbell dot wav that's in quotes that's a string and that's the name of the file that we're going to play comma and then in quotes rb that means read binary just the raw ones and zeros off of the file make sure that those are in parentheses and we say as wave underscore file make sure you put a colon at the end so that's just going to read in the raw ones and zeros that are inside the file drum underscore cowbell and it's going to put that in a variable named wave underscore file now the next line will indent, that's really important when you use the with as statements, and we'll create a variable called wave, and we'll set that equal to wave file, which is the class type, and we're going to pass in wave underscore file, the ones and zeros, so that's going to create a real wave file from the raw ones and zeros we just read into wave underscore file, it's going to put that in a variable called wave. Then we're going to call audio dot play. That's the play method on the audio object that we created up here, which is an audio out for the board speaker. It's going to play audio out of the board speaker on our CPB. We pass in wave, which is the wave file we just created. So we're playing that wave file. And then by saying while audio dot playing, we continue to check to make sure that the audio is playing. We've got a colon after that and we say pass. So this while statement here just says play the whole file and don't continue until you've played all of the file. That's it. Let's try this out. We'll show the serial monitor. We'll click on save. And every time you click save, the program runs and we hear the cowbell sound. Nice. So now that we got that down, let's kick it up with a challenge by applying what you've learned in an earlier lesson. This will be the Christopher Walken challenge in what was one of the greatest Saturday Night Live skits of all time, where he said, I gotta have more cowbell. So we'll help out Bruce Dickerson himself by writing code to play the drum underscore cowbell dot wave file whenever button A on the CPB is pressed. So pause, give this a shot, and when you're done, let's compare answers. Now, if we're going to play a sound whenever button A is pressed, we're going to use this block of code here. So I'm going to highlight that and cut it out with a Command X on the Mac, Control X on Windows. And we deliberately left code in here from our previous example where we set up our button A, so we don't need to set up button A. But I am going to delete the extra code that I don't need inside of the while true loop. But I do want to check to see if button A dot value is true, because if it is, that means the button is pressed. And then I'll just paste in the code that I cut. Now, I also need to make sure that I get my indentation right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this entire block of code that I just pasted in. And when you have code highlighted, you can just press the tab key. And every time you press the tab key, you move all the highlighted code out by one tab. I'll press tab twice because I need to have this whole block indented underneath if button A dot value, but this should be all we need to do. So I'm going to click on the save button. I could check things out in the serial console, but I'm being brave. I don't think I've got any errors here. And if you've got a fever and the only prescription is more cowbell, you can solve that problem with CircuitPython. So for the next challenge, we want to harken back to what we learned about functions. We want to write a reusable function called play underscore file. We want to be able to use that whenever we want to play a file. That should accept a string argument of the name of the file that we want to play. And we should call play underscore file when we press button A, passing in drum cowbell. And when button B is pressed, we should pass in the sound bd underscore zoom dot wave. So why don't you give that a shot? Pause. And when you're ready, let's compare answers. So above while true, we'll create our function. Remember, we define that with a def keyword, and we're going to call that play underscore sound. In between parentheses, we're going to pass in an argument that we'll call file name. Make sure that you've got a colon at the end of this statement. And then when I call this function, well, I want to run all of the code that I currently have underneath if a button underscore a dot value. So I'll highlight that. I'll cut it out. And I don't think I need this comment, so I'll delete that. I'll paste the cut lines underneath my function definition. Now we can see that these are indented too much, but in the way that you can highlight lines and press tab to move all the lines over to the right, you can press shift tab to move the highlighted lines over to the left. Make sure you fix this width line here. Remember, width is got these lines indented underneath that. That's an easy mistake for newbies to make. Python gets super picky about indentation. Remember, you have to indent lines pretty much after any line that has a colon at the end of it. Then, since I'm passing file name in as the argument here, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste that over drum underscore cowbell dot wave. I don't want to use this literal string in here. I want to use whatever I'm passing in as the file name. And now we've got a reusable function. So let's go ahead and use this. Under button underscore a dot value, I'm going to call play underscore sound. And in between parentheses and double quotes, I'm going to pass in drum underscore cowbell dot wave. 
And then just below this, make sure that you outdent once. We're going to say if button underscore b dot value colon, and then we're going to call play underscore sound. But this time we're going to pass in bd underscore zoom dot wave. And remember that z-o-m-e, not z-o-n-e. Let's open up the serial console, click on save, and try this out. Nice work, my friends. Now we've got the start of a drum machine here, and we'll make a more robust drum machine in subsequent videos. But for now, you've got the ability to play WAV files in your growing CircuitPython skill set. Feel good about those skills, coder, and keep at it.